Hi boys and girls, nice to see you again this week. I am so excited because we are starting a new series in our RC Kids and it is called Foundations of Faith. And we're going to be learning all these cool and different new and exciting things that are really the basis of our faith in Jesus Christ. So today we're going to be learning about Moses and the burning bush. And as the weeks go on, we will learn some other examples of how God is real and present in our lives. Today, we are going to be reading from Exodus chapter 3, all of chapter 3, and chapter 4, verses 1 through 17. And like I said a moment ago, we'll be reading about Moses and the burning bush, okay? Moses is tending his sheep when he sees a strange sight. Picture this, a bush that's on fire, but it's not burning up. When he goes to investigate, he hears God speak to him and sees God give clear signs of who he is. Moses' encounter makes it clear that God is real. And that brings us to this week's Bible point, God is real. And our new summary verse that we'll be working on for the next few weeks, O oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. And that comes from Psalm 8, verse 1. I want to ask you guys to please excuse the lighting is a little different now because we changed the light fixture um, where I record our videos. So I know there's kind of like a shadow going on just behind me. All right, my friends, I'm going to ask you guys to bow your heads and close your eyes as we prepare our hearts to learn um, about some of the foundations of our faith. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to get together and learn more about your word from our very own homes and with our families. Lord, we ask that you open up our hearts so we can understand how you are real. You present such um, an obvious example in the story that we're going to learn today about Moses and the burning bush. Um, and I just pray that you help us understand what it all means. I ask you this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends. So we are going to spend a few months actually finding out the answer to this question. Who is God? We're going to start today by learning our Bible point that God is real. Um, so in today's Bible story, we'll see how God used a strange sight to get Moses' attention. And then Moses could see that God is real. Um, if I ask you guys to tell me, how can you know, how do you know that your family is real? You might say, well, Miss Christie, my mom is right here. I can see her. I can touch her. I can hear her when she tells me to clean my room or that it's time for dinner. And you would be right. That is how we know someone in our family is real. We can see them. We can touch them. We can hear them. But sometimes that's not the case exactly for God. So how do we know that he's real? It's pretty easy to prove someone standing right next to us is real. You can see them, touch them, hear them. But today we're learning that God is real. And what evidence is there that that's true? Well, we can't hear him. We can't see him or touch him the same way that we could with our families. But let's look at this encounter that he has with Moses and search for evidence that God is real. One way you know your family members are real is that you can hear them. That's right. And we'll see that Moses heard from God. It all started when Moses saw a bush that was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. As Moses got closer to check it out, this is what he heard. So we're going to read from Exodus chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. When the Lord saw what he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, 
Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. So how does this show that God is real? Not only did Moses hear God say his name, plus identify himself as God, but God went on to tell Moses a whole lot. He told Moses he was going to rescue the people of Israel out of Egypt, where they were slaves. He also told Moses he'd give the people of Israel a new place to live with plenty of food. He gave Moses specific instructions on what to do. Let's see what it would be like to hear God speak that clearly. Are you ready? Okay, my friends. Please clap your hands three times. Did you guys hear me ask you to clap your hands? Did you clap your hands? That was a pretty clear message, right? Well, very similar to that um, is how Moses heard God. It was very clear. But that's not always the case, okay? Sometimes it can be hard to hear God the same way we hear a human voice, the same way you're hearing me right now. In fact, you may even start to wonder if God is really real. But we just saw evidence that God can speak as clearly as I just spoke to you. Plus, God still speaks today. It might not always be a voice that you can hear, but God speaks to us through the Bible through other people, through what we feel and sense in our hearts, and through his creation. We know God is real because Moses heard him, and we can listen for him today, too. Another sign that your family is real and that you can touch the people, I'm sorry, another sign that your family is real is that you can touch the people in your family. I can touch Victoria, I can touch Michael, can't touch them right this second because they're taking a little nap, but I can when they're awake and they're around me, right? Um, and we can't touch God, but God did ask Moses to partner with him to do the work of freeing people from slavery. God said this, peek back into your Bible, Exodus chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, uh, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Now, here's the thing. Moses, he didn't really want to partner with God. The job seemed pretty hard, but God had chosen Moses to be his leader. Moses didn't get to touch God, but he did get to work with God. And that's almost the same thing. Imagine right now that I ask you to close your eyes and walk across the room without any peeking. That might be kind of hard, but if I said, first, partner up with someone in your family, a brother or sister, your mom or your dad, and then do it. Close your eyes, no peeking, and have your parent or brother or sister, maybe a cousin, guide you across the room, making sure you stay safe. Well, that would, you wouldn't be able to see the person, but you'd be able to work with the person, partner up with the person to get the job done. God is real. When you and your mom or dad or brother and sister linked up to walk across that room with your eyes closed, you could work together to accomplish something, getting across the room safely. 
Even though we can't touch God, we can work with him to do important work like telling people about Jesus or showing his love. When we do God's work, we often feel his power working through us. Now, a third sign your partner um, is real is that you can see your partner. Your partner could be your mom or your dad, your brother or sister, the person that you just uh, linked up with, right, to walk across the room. Well, if I look around the room right here, I can't exactly see God right here, right now, right? Um, but let's look for visual evidence of God in Moses' story. And um, I'm, we're going to read from the Bible to see this visual evidence. So these things that God is actually showing Moses, so Moses can see, okay? First, we're going to read about that burning bush. That's going to be in Exodus 3, verses 1 through 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. So that's our first visual, the burning bush. Next, uh, we see that he uses a snake as a staff, okay? And that's going to be Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. So let me get that ready for me here. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. So that's his second visual, okay? We've got the, the burning bush and the snake staff. Next, we're going to read about the snowy hand, and that's going to come from Exodus chapter 4 again, verses 6 and 7. Then the Lord said, Put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, the skin was leprous. It had become as white as snow. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. That's our third visual. Now, the next visual is going to be bloody water, and that's going to come also from Exodus chapter 4, but now verses 8 and 9. Then the Lord said, If they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. So that's the fourth visual that he gives to us, okay? I mean, if that is not showing you that God is real, I don't know what would, right? Moses didn't see God himself, at least not in this Bible story. But he sure saw a lot of miraculous signs that proved God is real. We made silly imitations of the signs, but they were nowhere near as amazing as the real signs from our real God. But, you know, I think we see signs all around us that God is real too. They're called God sightings. And as I was preparing for today's lesson, I kept thinking back on our VBS last year when we would notice God sightings all throughout the day and then get to share them in our closing ceremony. So that brought back a lot of good memories. 
Um, these God sightings aren't times that we see God like we might see another person, but they're times we see evidence that God is real and can work around us. So one of my favorite God sightings is actually the rainbow. His promise to us after it rained, and we see that rainbow, his promise that he would never flood the earth again like he did with Noah and his ark. And every time I see a rainbow, it just reminds me of his promise. And it is a God sighting, okay? When we see these God sightings, whether they feel big or small, they're signs that God is real. They're ways to see God. So Moses got to the burning bush where he saw a sign that God is real. Then he heard God and had a whole conversation with him about how to set the Israelites free from slavery. Then God gave him even more visual ways to prove that he's real. And after that whole experience, Moses went on to partner with God to do something amazing. God is the same real God today that he was for Moses. In fact, God told Moses a name that shows that God is the same all the time. Let's pop back to Exodus chapter 3 and let's read verse 14. It says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. What do you think the name I am means? How does that name show that God is real today like he was in Moses' time? Well, I am is a name that shows God is always the same. I am. He just is. So we can pay attention to how God is real as we listen for him, work alongside him, and look for God sightings. All right, my friends, I ask as we wrap up today's lesson that you join me by bowing your heads and closing your eyes for another word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the message that you have brought to us today on how you are real and how you equipped Moses to show the Israelites and the Egyptians that you are real, that you sent him to free them from slavery. Lord, we ask that you um, keep our, our hearts, our eyes and our hearts open to God's sightings so we can see how you are real all around us all the time. We ask that you continue to keep us safe and healthy. And we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And before we go, I've got our Moses and the Burning Bush coloring page for you guys that I emailed um, to your parents. And it's got our new summary verse for the next few weeks. O oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. Psalm 8, verse 1. And Boys and girls, I pray you have a wonderful week and that we get to share in another lesson together again next week. Bye, my friends.